Okay, here on Metal Talk, we're here at the uh, Brixton Academy, later on tonight. Still powerful on stage, but right now I'm with the Brave Support Band from New York, The Cringe. Hi guys, how are you? Hey man, we're good, how are you doing? And uh, please introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you do in the band. My name is Roto, I play lead guitar in The Cringe. My name is JC, I'm a singer, I play rhythm guitar and keyboards. Johnny, bass. Uh, Sean, I play drums. And um, it's your first time here in the UK, and um, we, You've released actually four albums, the latest one being uh, Hiding in Plain Sight, which is actually here in the UK on April the 14th on Sony Red, and it's actually the first album to come out in the UK. And um, I must say, how's this tour been? Because like, you're quite a brave in many ways to go to Still Panther as an unknown band here in the UK. I keep saying that like before about the walk on stage, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've been reading the reviews, you know, and you've actually been going down very well. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I've always <clears throat> been justifying it as thinking, granted, uh, outer packaging-wise, we look and act nothing like the Panther act. They're glam, 80s, over-the-top, outrageous, and we're probably a little more um, along the lines of uh, like a grunt. Like, you can see us on tour, like, say, Soundgarden. Uh, but I think at, at, at Root Bottom with us, it's really about uh, we strive to write very hooky, heavy rock songs. And that's really what Panther's all about. So. It seems at least so far, thankfully, the fans of uh, Panther have been, you know, seeming to enjoy our music. So, mm -hmm. if you like a heavy, hooky rock song, uh, we're your guys. And I was like, you've been going for like 10 years in your career, and coming over to England for the first time as an unknown band here in Europe. Is it like starting all over again? Um, it is and it isn't. Um, it's, it's just so different that it's hard to compare to back home. Um, I don't know, it seems a little more... Well, to be honest with you, in some ways, having been around for a long time in the States, it's, it's kind of refreshing to come to the UK mm -hmm. because um, people don't have any real preconception of, of what the band is about. So actually, I think in some ways we feel a bit liberated, kind of able to just rock out and do mm -hmm. our thing. And uh, like I said, I mean, we... You're right. I mean, in some ways, I think it is a bit brave because if you don't go down in front of Steel Panther's audience, uh, that could probably be a very unpleasant experience. Um, but really, by and large, the audiences have been super cool and super supportive, and we're here to, you know, as much as kind of you know, win some respect as anything else. We're not we're not here to be to try to be Steel Panther in any way. We we know what their turf is. We just want to rock out. And, and, uh, and how do you find the UK audience is different to the American audience? Because I've, I've always, I've, I've never seen a gig in America for like 20 years myself, but I've always had reports that are more reserved and more like, you know, okay. Do you find the UK fans more appreciative and up for a good time? Any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Don't be shy to answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe there's a... There, I mean, we love America, obviously, it's our home. But especially when you get to some of the big cities, there's a... A bit of a thing like, oh, I gotta go to yet another music thing. I've been to like five this week, and uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know there can be this jaded thing where, whereas over here, it seems like everyone's just excited, you know, be out to see a good good rock band, have a good time. Um, yeah, the obsession with being cool doesn't seem quite as intense mm. here, perhaps, as it is in certainly in New York. We love our hometown, but it is a very cool place. <laughs> and um, since you've been here in the UK, have you had much time to have a look around the cities? I know you're, you're very busy when you're on tour, but obviously it's your first time in England, so you do want to get out there and get a few snaps. So have you seen much of the country? Well, we did. Um, I actually used to live in London uh, oh. years ago in Bayswater area. But uh, we did manage to get a day off in Cambridge. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Really beautiful, beautiful. So, yeah. And <clears throat> yesterday we did have a day off in London, but instead of seeing the sights, we uh, went to Abbey Road Studios Number 2 and recorded there for... 10 hours. And um, I was kind of asking you about that actually, because I did see a little photo on Facebook the day, and um, obviously I believe you're a big Beatles fan, is that correct as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's got Beatles tattoos. Oh wow. Oh, so, look at his haircut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like a Beatles. <laughs> and um, it's quite funny actually, because I've been fortunate myself to go to Abbey Road Studios, and um, the first thing I, well not the first thing I did there, but one thing I had to do when I was there is go and visit the John and just sit down on the toilet thinking, oh, maybe Paul McCartney's been here before. <laughs> it's like a oil phone. So I did the same sort of thing past for your minds as well. Uh, not so much in the new, but uh, I did play the piano that he played, that yes. Paul played on uh, Late Madonna. Yeah. And it was, it was really like a total magical thing for all of us. I mean, we're all, mm. as I would imagine most people are, we're huge Beatle fans. 
and to go to the the spot where essentially all their music was made, mm. and then you know record in that room. We, what what was illuminating for us was we didn't realize that that room had so much character. You know, you you don't know the character of a room until you play that, but it's it doesn't look like it should sound good. It looks almost like a, like a shorter gymnasium. But it had such life to it, but it was still very musical. And there's no ISO booths in the room, so you are forced to play together as a band, mm -hmm. look each other in the face, which is really cool. So it definitely had a vibe to it. Yeah, really and, warm, warm sound. Yeah. But even, even the routine stuff, like going and grabbing a bite to eat in the canteen, or you know, you've seen video of like the guys in Pink Floyd smoking and talking about making Dark Side. I mean, you, you can't, you know, there's, there's nothing for us anyway. You can't not be moved. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And what was your sort of favorite period of the Beatles? Because I've had so many sounds across the years. I mean, it's like asking, what's your child? favorite sex position? <laughs> but what is your favorite sex position? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm, I've always been astounded that within the period of 18 months, they released three albums, any one of which would have been uh, the masterpiece for any other band, and that's Rubber Soul, Revolver, and Sgt. Pepper. I mean, they did that within a year and a half. Like, mm, I can't even wrap my head around that. Yeah. And also, that must be a highlight for you, and um, in all your 10 years as a, as a band, what, what, what has been the biggest highlight for you in your career so far? Hopefully tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, Abbey Road, recording at Abbey Road was a pretty big yeah, highlight. That was, that was a and to be honest, this tour has really been great for us because we've been sort of pacing when, when we get over here to the UK looking for the right opportunity. And so now that it's happened and we're over here and we're getting to uh, you know, connect with England, it's, it's been great. And I must ask you, because I know your fans watching this video will be thinking, what were they recording? So is this like uh, just a single you're recording now? Or? No, in fact, what we've, what we've done is we, um, you know, we debated you know, how to get the most most, you know, out of the experience. And what we basically decided was, you know, instead of just knocking out some basic tracks, let's go in there and, and do what a lot of other people have been doing in the last few years, which is live at Abbey Road. So we actually recorded our, pre our set. yeah, our set, our live set pretty much, the, you know, because you know, we've been on tour, so it's pretty yeah. well oiled. And we thought, let's go in and capture that. Um, there is one new track in the set. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, we did record technically one track. Yeah. But we literally played it live, no overdubs, just recorded about nine songs or whatever it was. Brilliant. And would that be like a, 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 come out physically? Would that be like on download in the future? One day, certainly. Will. Absolutely. In fact, we've even filmed it, and we're uh, we'll be putting together basically kind of a DVD kind of version of it. Well, so I'm pretty excited about that. People will be looking forward to that. And I must talk about the videos on the album. Um, Hiding in plain sight. You filmed like three videos: Deep Girl, Rushing Through the World, and Finally Going to Be on Your Own. And uh, they're all quite interesting videos. But I, I don't believe you, you actually appeared in those videos. I think we were briefly in Finally Going to Be on Your Own. Uh, towards the end, but yeah, I kind of, you know, I, I wanted the video, you can go see us live if you want to see us play. Um, I always kind of felt the whole pretending to play on a video thing just seemed a little dishonest. I mean, it's how you make videos a lot of times, but I wanted to do something more conceptual, and, uh, and I, I literally had almost nothing to do with the making of those videos, but I hooked up with different filmmakers, and I said, let me see your vision. And you know they would do some storyboards for me, and I would say yeah, eh, more this direction. But uh, basically, it was uh, artistic license. Mm. These uh, two crazy filmmakers. That's like the other very artsy films, like Deep Girl's got like a, a naked lady, and it's got like sort of yeah, moving yeah. tattoos on her body. That must take so long to make that video. I wasn't there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncanny though. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. We were all we were all pretty pretty knocked out when we saw it. Yeah, I was like, any fans listen to this? Check those videos out because they, they are fantastic. And um, what, what, what's what for the future? You got this tour. So are you planning on coming back to the UK soon for the festival circuit? Maybe. A hundred percent. We are working on that right now. Uh, we also are gonna go back home and be. Our, we have new material that we're uh, wood shedding, as the expression goes. And uh, we want to uh, complete a new album, you know, hopefully at some point this year. Although sometimes the pace at which we work doesn't allow for that. And um, with all rock bands, there's always people always try and put a genre on to music. What sort of genre would you say your, your sound comes under? You know, I think the band has uh, evolved a bit over the last uh, you know, number of years, but um, I think at this point, uh, I think at this point it's, it's probably fair to say that we are uh, a kind of uh, 
Melodic prog punk. I'm not the sound of that. I was going to say polka. <laughs> That's in there, but I, I think melodic prog punk maybe. It's, it's, it's coming out of the post grunge period, and it's like all power pop, as some people say. And uh, sort of, I think a lot of reviews I've been reading of people who sort of compared it to like Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age sound. Would you agree with that? Uh, I'd be honoured to be compared to either of those bands. They're two of my favourite bands. Fair enough. That's fair enough. I mean, what, what, what do the Foo Fighters do? They, mm. They're muscular, pretty developed players playing, you know, hooky, hooky, uh, or playing, you know, hooky uh, melodic rock. So, so sure, so sure. That's that's. And I believe you spoke Cheap Trick not so long ago. How was that for you, Sean? Was that good for you? Yeah, Cheap Trick. You know, we're all such fans of that band that to uh, be able to be on the stage with them was just amazing. Really thrilled. So quite charismatic, especially like Rick Nelson, you know. So did you have any uh, funny stories with him or good times? Man, he's just such a character, you know. You guys remember anything? About yeah, he's, 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 first of all, he's the sweetest guy. He'll just, he came in the middle of our sound check and started busting our chops like in a funny way. And he lets you try on his five neck guitar, which mm -hmm. weighs about 80 pounds. And I couldn't even, my arm couldn't even reach to the bottom neck, much less around the bottom neck. And he, you know, he puts that thing on and jumps around stage with it. I don't know how he doesn't do serious damage to the spinal cord, but <laughs> that band is like eternal. And Rob, and Rob and Xander is yeah. still the most kick-ass rock singer. I mean, he still looks young and he's still got white voice. His voice sounds like cuts through lead. Yeah. 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 People who, they just, the voice yeah. just stays, he's you know. And um, obviously, Rick Nelson, he's always trying out millions of plectrums. So have you got a nice big collection of plectrums of cheap trick at home now? <laughs> yeah, he gave me a few. He, I mean, he literally has thousands per show. He just, just it's raining picks in the first few rows. So uh, yeah, that's just, that's definitely. And what, talking of a band like Cheap Trick, a band that's been going for like almost four decades now, what, what what do they teach you in terms of professionalism and how they go about things? Um, that you got to take it seriously. That you got to put in the work, um, and that you you know they've been on tour constantly since 1972. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can tell because they make it look easy. They I mean they've got the songs, they've got the approach, they've got the attitude, they've got the musicianship um, but uh, it doesn't you know it's not it's not easy you got to work at it of course and uh, sure you've played with some of the uh, you know you've been the, the quiet boy here but uh, you've played some big names in the past Bruce Springsteen you know how did that come about right uh, well um, in New York you know I do quite a bit of sessions and uh, so I'm really fortunate to have a chance to record with him you know I'm a big fan and um, yeah he had a bunch of tracks that came out on a box set and there were a couple of uh, from a period that had drum machines, and um, he wanted to replace that with live players and stuff like that. So yeah, he has a studio there um, at his estate out in Jersey, and um, but yeah, really an honor to get to play with him. Fantastic, and just before we start this interview, I was wearing a deep purple jacket, and I just discovered that, thankfully, you're all fans of my favorite band in the world, and you've actually stepped in for deep purple, and it's a fantastic right. story, so please tell us about that. Yeah, you know, it was, I was part of this house band situation, uh, mm -hmm. Where Pavarotti used to do all those things, where you know he'd, he'd play with uh, Bono and Clapton, and you know all these different people. He did these big concerts in the summers, and um, so Deep Purple was on the bill, and uh, Ian um, missed the flight. It wasn't there for the actual sound check, so I got to sit in and cover it. But wow, what a thrill! You know, to be able to do that, uh, smoke on the water and jam out with Purple Man. That's really <laughs> awesome. dreams are made of. Yeah, yeah. man, that's incredible. And Johnny, you've been sitting there quietly minding your own business, so I'll leave it to you to uh, wrap this interview up and give a message to the fans. And... Oh, wrong guy to do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bass players, they never talk. So <laughs> <laughs> down, keep it quiet. Great, it's been great talking to you. I wish you all the best for us tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing you live. The album Hiding in Plain Sight is out on Sony Red on April the uh, 14th here in the UK. Go and get it, folks. I've heard it. It's a great album. All yeah, the best for the future. Much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.